Today I have a riddle for you. What's stronger than a mage with a powerful staff? A mage with two of them, a powerful staff in each hand. Come on, that was obvious. Yes, you can dual wield these huge ass Carter staves in Baldur's Gate 3 with the right setup and get some insane benefits while doing so. This is thanks to the dual wielder feat, which is nothing new to our D&D veterans, but in my opinion, this is probably the most broken feat for a sorcerer in Baldur's Gate 3 specifically. For example, it allows you to use level 6 spells back to back in the same turn for completely free. Who doesn't want that? But more on that later on in this video. As you guys know, I made a get over early with a sorcerer in Baldur's Gate 3 video that covered you from level 1 to level 6 and showed you how to be the most powerful sorcerer in that level bracket. Today we finish off the progression path and focus more on the mid to late game, level 7 to level 12, the strongest spells you want to pick to have the best overall selections of spells ultimately, best gear and so on. If you remember in part 1 at level 5 I took fireball and at level 6 I then took counter spell but I strongly recommend you to replace a older spell as well and get haste at level 6. Haste gives you a bunch of extra utility for a sorcerer including a whopping full extra action every turn so you can cast two fireballs every turn without chugging a potion or something like that yes haste does facilitate that so absolutely take it and you can twin haste as well by the way so you can give it to someone else in your party as well which i by the way do strongly recommend to use haste like that always when you use it because an extra action is a huge bonus doesn't matter for anyone especially for classes however that don't require a resource outside of actions like a rogue ranger or your fighter for example now haste becomes even better for your sorcerer as you get more slots because at level 5 you only have one level 3 spell slot but you get a bunch of extra spell slots obviously as you level so the slot you use to cast haste becomes increasingly less significant. The same thought also applies to counter spell which is why we also take counter spell at level 6. Completely different spells but counter spell is a level 3 spell that you still use regularly at even level 12 and it's a spell that is activated on your enemy's turn as a reaction. As you know counter spell just negates anything the enemy wants to cast on you so you do something useful in their turn and essentially nullify whatever they're doing giving you so much momentum in combat as you just remove their turn and you can then accordingly go ahead and keep obliterating them afterwards like i also mentioned in part one fireball is really good when your sorcerer gets to level seven and level eight fireball also starts to shine more and more as you can start upcasting it to be a level four fireball and with haste it becomes very deadly and i'm saying that specifically because the level four spells that you unlock at level seven and eight aren't really that amazing or anything so you still want to mostly rely on all the spells that we already have but there are still some good level 4 spells and it gets much better as you progress to level 5 and level 6 spells there are some really good spells in there and this build is very dynamic as you can do everything with it and it just keeps you always in the middle of action just like that one game enlisted enlisted is a world war 2 action-packed multiplayer shooter that has a strong focus on historical authenticity and thanks to enlisted for sponsoring today's video what is really cool about enlisted is that you have a ton of weapons featuring hundreds of firearms and specialized weapons weapons from common weapons seen throughout the war to various trial weapons and prototypes rarely portrayed in games and then you have a bunch of badass vehicles as well that you can utilize like armored cars tanks fighters bombers and other vehicles to destroy your enemies with even more to come as well by the way you can fully customize all your soldiers as every soldier is an individual with his own name skills and loadout and the fact that there's so much depth to how you approach combat is what i really like about this game and this is available on pc xbox series x and s and playstation 5 as well as playstation 4 and xbox Xbox One with cross-platform support. There is no purchase necessarily, simply follow the link to download and play for free and try it out yourself. If you use my link in the description, you also get a bonus that consists out of 3 days of premium time for free and several orders for troops and weapons. Back to the video and let's continue with level 7. At level 7 I would take wall of fire, you can put the spell on choke points and it will pack a punch. Everything that wants to cross you has to go through the wall of fire and take damage. You can also spread this spell out quite significantly so it has a good reach. At level 8 I would just take CC as you will have great damage with all the spells from part 1 and fireball so something like polymorph or banishment are both decent options right here but at level 8 what is even more important is that we get that dual wielder feat that I started this video with really good feat that allows us to dual wield weapons that aren't light and thus normally can dual wield and it gives us even some armor class in addition as well which is a very welcome bonus you will see how good this feat really is in practice in a second when I go over the two staves that we want to use with this feat. At level 9 we unlock level 5 spells which provide you a selection of really good spells that you can choose from. The level 5 spells are some of my favorites personally and at level 9 I recommend you to get 2 level 5 spells, cloud kill and then use your replace spell option to get halt monster. These two are fundamentally different from each other and both are concentration spells 
else so you can never use them at the same time but that is also exactly why we take both of them at level 9. Cloud Kill is a really good spell for AoE and for just completely controlling the battlefield. You drop it and it slowly kills everything inside of it and it has a really nice range to it. It is a big area that you cover with the poisonous cloud. Cloud kill is especially good if you can position it at any choke point or essentially any path that the enemies need to go through to get to you. They'll fail while doing so and really it will just melt whatever enters this poisonous cloud. You can also use cloud kill on known spawn locations if you know for instance that the enemies will enter the fight from that point then everything that enters the fight accordingly will instantly get a nice little welcome from you. It gets even better because you can reposition cloud kill every single turn without spending another spell slot. The recast will appear at the right side of your hotbar so all around a lot of utility and power to be found in this spell that is really useful for certain scenarios. The other spell we then take at level 9, Halt Monster, is absolutely amazing as well. It is a direct upgrade of the Halt Person spell, so if you still have that, you can replace it with this. And the reason why I'm saying that is because Halt Monster works on everything. Yes, everything, as specified with the word creature in the description no matter how big the target is. It just insta-locks them in place and they can't do anything if you maintain concentration on them for up to 10 turns. When you apply Hold Monster on an enemy, however, all attacks within 3 meters will be critical hits. So you can utilize that very useful extra effect to your advantage as well and just completely annihilate whatever you're fighting with all these critical hits and they can't do anything about it. It doesn't get any more satisfying than that. And no spoilers, but this spell works tremendously well versus some main story characters that some people seem to struggle with that have say hmm 666 hp then at level 10 we get another really amazing level 5 spell telekinesis this one is really fun to use you can levitate whatever you're fighting and play with them in the air like you're playing with your food throw them down the ditch and break all their bones it is all possible but what is even better with this spell is to look around you and find those chasms or really anything that showcases the death prompt and throw them in there. Your enemy will instantly die, making this spell absolutely god tier whenever there's some kind of deepness anywhere around you that you can throw your enemies in. And the spell has a whopping 80 meter range as well, so it's a very large radius surrounding your character that you can grab your enemies with and then throw them accordingly within that radius. You get a lot of options and possibilities thanks to that range and radius. Out of experience, I can also definitely say that there are a lot of places that have these chasms, including surrounding quest related characters. No need to fight them and go through that entire process, just throw them and kill them instantly. And also you get another telekinesis for free without using another spell slot every time you cast telekinesis. So you get two casts for one level 5 spell slot, making it even better. You also get another meta magic at level 10 and we kind of already took the best ones in my opinion. So from the remaining ones, I do like the heightened meta magic one the most. It comes in clutch when you really want your opponent to fail a saving throw. At level 11 then, we unlock level 6 spells. And in my opinion, 3 level 6 spells are particularly amazing and you want to get all 3. So at level 11, we can get 2 of them using the replace spell option. As well as just picking a new spell for leveling up. At this level, I would highly recommend getting barrier of invulnerability and disintegrate. This integrate is pure raw evisceration in the biggest sense of the word. It literally turns your enemies to ashes. Now what makes this integrate so good isn't even the very high damage, which is also force damage that will at least deal between 50 and 100 damage. No, it is the fact that you can twin it as well. So you can completely eradicate two enemies at the same time if you wish to do so. And with the staves that we will use for this build, we will be able to cast these disintegrates for free. And so you can just completely melt the same enemy with back to back disintegrates in one turn as well in addition to twinning the spell. Now other spells you want to get at level 11, Barrier of Invulnerability is absolutely god tier as well for the situations it's meant to be used in and those situations are sticky, difficult situations, situations that look doomed or situations where you are heavily outnumbered, where you want to out strategize your enemies. All footage and gameplay in this video is on tactician mode and that is important to note because Barrier of Invulnerability can trivialize a lot of very hard 
hard encounters on tactician mode. The way you deploy the spell is to use it somewhat at a distance of your enemies and preferably in a way that makes a lot of enemies group up together in the distance while they're trying to move to you. So essentially in like a corner or behind a choke point above the stairs you get it or even in the middle of a big area so you and your team are centralized and you can attack everyone from different angles. After you deploy your barrier get your entire team inside and then every turn dip out attack your enemies dip back in with the remaining movement that you have after attacking to get your invulnerability back and from that point onwards rinse and repeat. You keep attacking everyone at a distance and they can't do anything about you. Enemies that then come in melee range and attack you in melee range will enter the barrier as well but in melee range they can't do anything against you either because you're invulnerable. They will just keep hitting you like a headless chicken with no results whatsoever. Then you keep utilizing this strategy for a few turns, kill everything outside the barrier, make the battle much more favored towards you by killing a lot of enemies. Then ultimately when you've killed everything outside of the barrier and the barrier has reached its maximum uptime, you finish off the ones that came in melee range and it should be a much easier task now as a big portion of the battlefield is gone. At level 12 we then take Chain of Lightning, another great spell that complements our Fireball for main AoE damage very well. For example against fire resistant enemies in those cases Chain of Lightning will be a very good alternative tool to use compared to Fireball. However it's even better to use the spell when the enemy is wet because they are for example standing in water. The spell will deal double damage in those scenarios against everything that is wet and the spell already has really good base damage so it becomes a very destructive spell that is also AoE. What is also very useful is the pattern of how Chain of Lightning hits various targets. It is AoE but it's a different type of AoE compared to Fireball where you just nuke an entire area without having to specifically target something. Chain of Lightning on the other hand travels between enemies so versus enemies that are hard to reach or positioned in such a way that Fireball can't hit all of them, Chain of Lightning will then still accordingly hit all targets as showcased in this example. And I can keep going on on why this spell is really good but what is also a great benefit especially at like level 11 12 when you have entered the main city that is ridden with those steel watchers is that the steel watchers are weak against lightning damage so when you use chain of lightning you can really obliterate these fights if you then think it couldn't get any better no because chain of lightning can also be twin since its initial hit is based on a target instead of just an area so that essentially means you can double the range nuking two different areas with just one cast making the spell even more destructive at level 12 you also get another feat as a pure sorcerer and I would probably go Warcaster here since we have a variety of concentration spells that we definitely do not want to have be broken prematurely and Warcaster is amazing for that purpose. You should also already be at 20 charisma if you fall part one of my guide so you don't need more ability improvement for charisma. You can get your charisma to even 22 relatively easily in act 3. If you care about spoilers then look away for a few seconds but otherwise you'll need to go to this place as displayed on screen and any debuff that you get from it can also be removed with the remove curse spell so it's essentially a free boost to your charisma which is really nice now let's talk about our gear and how we are able to cast level 6 spells for free for instance in my opinion the two best staves in the game are the mark shishir staff and the staff of spell power they have exactly the same effects and they stack which makes them so good in conjunction because normally you can dual wield them but the earlier mentioned dual wielder feat will remove that restriction and allow us to wield these staves in conjunction outside of enhancing our spell attack rolls as well as our spell save dc they both give the arcane battery ability which gives us the ability to cast our next spell without spending a spell slot and that is really big for example you only get one level six spell slot as a maxed out sorcerer in Baldur's gate 3 so any spell up level to level six or just generally level six spells can now be cast at least three times in one turn and what that then looks like in combat is something like this for example if we use this integrate we activate arcane battery twin it and then instantly just get rid of two enemies with how destructive this ability is but we haven't lost any of our resources as you see then if you have haste on which i do recommend to cast preemptively you can then do exactly the same thing in the very same turn activate arcane battery again and get rid of two more enemies using this integrate instantly and as you see we still have our level six spell slot even though we have hit four different targets with a single target level 6 spell. Then we just do it again through our quickened meta magic and instantly get another enemy through disintegrate. So thanks to our stays we now essentially use 3 level 6 spell slots or 5 depending on your definition and cleared pretty much the entire battlefield in one turn. And it works on chain of lightning as well for example the exact same principle will apply there. You combine twinning chain of lightning with arcane battery to just deal free good damage to a bunch of different targets without using a spell slot and 
rinse and repeat do the exact same thing with your second arcane battery as well after you run out of arcane batteries you can then still use a quickened meta magic for the fifth chain of lighting and to get an extra turn and see how i just cast five different chains of lighting in one turn which is again let me reiterate a level six spell one thing i have to point out though two twin meta magics and one quicked meta magic will cost 15 sorcery points in total but the max number of sorcery points that you can get as a sorcerer is 12 so either that is bugged or it's intentional that twin meta magic is also free when used with arcane battery i personally do not know because it isn't explicitly stated in the description of arcane battery so it really can go either way if it is a bugged feature it is not a big deal because we can either double twin or use twin and one quicken for either 12 or 9 respective sorcery points so at the very least always have four chains of lighting with this setup in a turn if it's intentional then it's five chains of lighting but either way this is a really good setup and really good way to delete your enemies and you can also do this with an upscaled level six fireball whatever you want really the possibilities become really endless when dual wielding these staves and i have good news because these arcane battery abilities from our staves can be refreshed with just a partial long rest so essentially if you want to go to camp after every battle you can get your arcane batteries quickly back without using any camp supplies and that is also a pretty huge thing to note one more thing I need to know then is that the Marco Heshkir staff also gives you an ability called Kareska's Favor, which enhances your damage output for any of the elements in the game. You can choose which one you like. So in our case, that might be fire since we use a lot of fire spells in this build. And then in addition to the buffs, you also get another fireball for free as an extra cast. If you choose lighting, however, you get chain of lighting for free as an extra cast. So if you want to cast another chain of lighting to all the ones we can already cast with the earlier shown setup, well, go ahead and go for the lighting option. It's your choice. Also, this spell in particular makes your staves look absolutely badass. So all in all, these are absolutely amazing staves that you want to get. And how do you get them? Well, first of all, make sure to like this video. Subscribe if you haven't yet, because a lot more Baldur's Gate 3 content is on the way. And only then will you be able to get them. Yes, that's, that's a very true story. Now, if you haven't unlocked Act 3 yet and are in Act 2, then I would strongly recommend dual wielding the Melf first staff that you buy from Blurk with the incandescent staff that you buy from Quartermaster Tally in the last light in both of them will give you useful bonuses directly tied to your damage output the spell sparkler staff as discussed in part one is also still a really good option by the way so if you want to use that till you get to act three definitely use it in act three however you can get these amazing stays and you want to make them a top priority the thing with both of these stays is that they are located in areas where you also want to get your end game cloak robe gloves and in my opinion amulet so a big win-win situation in that regard the first area you want to go to is the house of hope that is accessed by going to the devil fee in Baldur's gate and and completing the ritual which then teleports you to the house of hope in the house of hope you can get the staff of spell power behind a locked wall in the middle of the area right next to the feast hall you just need to pass a few checks and if you do so you'll get entry to this area and get the staff of spell power you can also get the amulet of greater health in the house of hope in the area with the archivist and this might be a weird choice for an amulet but in my opinion this amulet is really good for a sorcerer it gives a whopping 23 constitution so one we get a bunch of extra hp which is really nice for our sustain but we also have a huge bonus to our constitution saving throws which in turn helps us out with maintaining our concentration spells like haste cloud kill globe of invulnerability hold monster and so forth and as you saw earlier in this video all those spells are really good you can also get the cloak of the Wii from either the trader in devil's fee or from a random chest in the house of hope really good cloak that gives us arcane enchantment but also absorb elements absorb elements is a great defensive feat which then accordingly also adds the damage from the element that you just absorbed to your next attack in the form of a 1d6 roll. For gloves, I would recommend using the Helda's gloves, which you also can get in the House of Hope after defeating a certain enemy. Gives us a nice bonus to our spell attack rolls as well as our spell save DC. The second area that you then definitely want to visit in Baldur's Gate is the Remesith Tower, which you can access by using the portals in the Sorcerer's Sundries building. Take the Dark Portal and then jump down using the button next to the Below Plague. You'll get to this area where two items are protected by this barrier type of thing. And one of them is our legendary Marco Heshkir staff that we already talked about. And the other one is the Rope of the Weave, which is a great option for your rope slot. The rope of the weave gives us a plus one bonus to spell save DC and spell attack rolls as well. And it's also a great defensive rope as it heals us and it gives us extra armor class, which is nice because it's not a armor piece but clothing rather. For boots, I still use the disintegrating night walkers from Act 1. They're just amazing. These boots give you the very useful Misty Step spell for free and they negate a variety of movement impairing effects. 
Also, just a quick reminder to use my link in the description to check out Enlisted, the action-packed World War II multiplayer shooter game. With my link, you get the juicy exclusive bonus that I talked about earlier, and you can start playing the game completely free right now. For your hat, I would highly recommend you to use the Hat of Fire Acuity. You get this hat by killing the strange ox in the last light in in Act 2. Arcane Acuity stacks a plus one bonus to spell attack rolls and spell difficulty class each time fire damage is dealt including spells with multiple projectiles like Scorching Ray for example. So we can definitely abuse that and stack the effect really quickly and make your damage output absolutely bonkers. A lot of our spells consist out of fire damage so this hat is a very nice addition to our gear. Make sure to check out part 1 as well and with all of that knowledge you will be the strongest sorcerer to have ever lived in the Forgotten Realms. <laughs>